When your colleagues are having a conversation about Docker, do you just nod along hoping that they don't ask you something about it? Well, if the answer is yes, this video is specifically for you. Hello world, my name is Monis and today we will talk about Docker. At the end of this video, you will be able to clearly understand what Docker is and why is it needed. We will also talk about Docker file, Docker images, Docker containers, and how are they different from each other. And we will do all of this with some really cool code examples, which you can find in the link in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. A long time ago, before anyone even knew the word Docker, the development in the software companies used to happen in a very different way. Let's say that you were building a web application in Java. In order to start development on your computer, you first need to set up the application on your personal computer so that you can work on it. This involved a lot of steps like installing Java, installing web servers, installing libraries, install database, insert data into the database, download the code, and copy some configuration files in 10 different mysterious locations on your computer. And after doing all of this, your application still won't start. And then you would ask a senior developer who has been in the company since before the time of the pyramids, who adds that one line of code to the configuration file, and voila, everything works. Now, all these steps need to be very well documented so that the new developers or a person coming back from their honeymoon could update their computers to make everything run. Even if one small configuration is missed, it could get problematic for anyone. And let's face it, the guy who has been in the company since 3000 BC may leave at any time. This is also a bit of a trouble when different developers have different computers and operating systems. For example, most of the people use Mac and Linux, while the new guy has sworn to use Windows for his entire life. On a bit of a serious note, local machines are still fine. Even if something is not running 100%, we can always find ways to tweak it because it is our computer and we have full access. But things get really tricky when we want to make an application live. We still need to follow all those steps to make our application run on an external server and host it on the internet. Well, this was a cause for concern. In order to solve these problems, Docker came into the picture. It came up with the idea of separating your infrastructure and your application. Your application is simply the APIs, business logic, and the underlying code to support this. Simply put, it's just a bunch of code and some libraries. And on the other hand, your infrastructure is a bunch of things, like a physical computer where everything will run, your database, installed software, system configuration, environment variables, and these kind of things. All of the manual steps that we discussed before were basically to set up the infrastructure. Now, Docker allows all of these steps to be managed automatically instead of a person following a sequence of steps manually, which basically sets up your infrastructure. Not only that, Docker is also able to build your application code, deploy it on the infrastructure, and even run it. And all of this happens in a very platform-independent way, so that the same infrastructure commands can run on different operating systems like Linux, Mac, and Windows. So let's see how this is done. If we try to understand the core of programming in general, the code that we write is just a set of instructions given to the computer. Similarly, the steps for setting up infrastructure can also be written as instructions. But the question is, where do we write those instructions and how do we run them? Docker allows us to write these instructions in a specific format called a Docker file. Just like you have syntax for Java, Python, C++ to provide instructions to your computer, Docker file also has its own syntax. The difference is, in programming languages, you automate the business logic, and in the Docker file, you automate infrastructure commands. On similar lines, just like you need Java or Python environment installed on your computer to run the Java or Python code, you need to have a Docker environment installed on your computer to run the Docker file, which contains your infrastructure commands. Now, let's imagine that we have a very basic application with a few HTML pages, and these HTML pages are in a Git repository. Our goal is to simply host these HTML pages on our local computer, which doesn't have any software installed on it except for two things. One is the Git client so that we can clone the repository, and second is the Docker desktop so that we can run the Docker infrastructure commands. So let's clone our repository. Our repository looks something like this. A bunch of HTML pages, a CSS, and a Docker file to contain the infrastructure commands. Now, in order to host these files on our computer, we need to follow some steps. First, we need to install a web server like Nginx or Apache. So let's go with Nginx. Next, we need to copy our HTML files into an Nginx directory 
from where Nginx hosts it. According to the Nginx documentation, that directory is this. Now we need to start the application. So far, it sounds clear. Now let's try to see how we can automate these instructions using our Docker file. The first line in our Docker file signifies what environment we would like to use in our application. It is prefixed with the word from, followed by the name of the image that we would like to use for our application. At this moment, you can consider an image as a lightweight version of Linux with Nginx installed on it, along with some other software and security packages to make everything work nicely. A lot of organizations and open source communities maintain different images for Java, Python, C++, Postgres database and such. These are pretty basic but stable images which provide an environment for you to run your commands. All these images are present on hub.docker.com. So when we write something like from nginx in our docker file, then there must be an image named nginx on the docker hub. Now that we have got our environment sorted, we need to copy our HTML and CSS to the nginx directory so that it can read it. Nginx specifies this directory in the documentation, so whatever goes in this directory is served by Nginx. Once this is done, we have to create our own image out of this Docker file. To do that, we can run this command. In this command, after the Docker build, we have a few parameters, so let's try to understand them a little bit. The first parameter is prefixed with hyphen f, followed by the name of the Docker file. In our case, the name of the Docker file is app.dockerfile. You can name it anything with the extension Dockerfile. Next parameter is hyphen t, followed by our very own custom image name, which has all these files that we copied. In our case, we would name it docker underscore nginx underscore image. And finally, we specify the path. This specifies where to find our files and directories. For example, in our app.docker file, we ask docker to copy all HTML and CSS files to the Nginx location. Path is the place where the docker is expected to find these files. Since this command was executed from the directory where the files were present, dot was specified to denote the current directory. Now, when this command is executed, the docker system will try to find the latest version of the Nginx image and load it onto our computer. If this process is successful, it will execute the remaining commands to copy the HTML and CSS to the Nginx directory. When all of these commands are successfully executed, a new image will be created, which is based on the Nginx image, but has some extra stuff that we needed. So, in a way, it becomes our very own custom image and resides on our computer. This can even be checked by executing the docker list command. This should list the new image with the name docker underscore nginx underscore image as we specified in our previous command. To summarize all of this, at first we had a docker file which contained some instructions and we used the docker build command to convert these instructions into an actual image. At this point, we have got ourselves a very well-defined image which contains everything we need, including our code, to run our app. And now, we also know the difference between a docker file and a docker image. Now, the next step is to run this image with the docker run command. A running version of an image is called a container. So here is a basic command to spawn a container based on an image. In this docker run command, we have specified two parameters. The first parameter is prefixed with hyphen p, which refers to port. Now, Nginx by default runs on port number 80 but this port resides within the docker container and is accessible only within the docker container. It means that if you were to access this application from your browser, which is outside of the docker, this port will not be accessible. Therefore, we need to forward the traffic from our computer's port number 80 to the docker's port number 80, so that the docker can pass our request to Nginx, which in turn can process our requests. Now, all of this can be made possible by using the hyphen p parameter. The left port is the port of the host system, that is your computer, and the port on the right is the Nginx port within Docker. This will allow the traffic from the host system to flow into the Docker's Nginx. Next parameter is the name of the image that we built before using the docker build command so that Docker knows which image it needs to run, because you may have a lot of other images in your system as well. So let's run this command and then try to access our application through the curl command. 
Here we can clearly see the page code along with server header which tells us that this page is indeed coming from Nginx. Similarly, we can access the Nginx app also from the browser to see the response. If we go to our Docker desktop and select containers on the left panel, we should clearly be able to see our container running in green. In addition to this, we can also see the image name and the forwarded ports. To practice and play around with this setup, you can download all of this code from my public repository, link is down in the description. Finally, to summarize all of this, Docker is basically a technology which decouples the application code from infrastructure. We write Dockerfile to write instructions on how to set up our infrastructure. This is usually based on another image like Java, Python, C++ or could be as simple as Nginx. These core images are maintained by different organizations and open source communities. With our Docker files, we use the images and customize them. Then we build these Docker files into new custom images. The build process executes the commands within the Docker file and in turn creates a new custom image which has everything we need to run our application. This image resides on our computer. Next, we simply run our image to see our application. A running image is basically called a container. And following the same lingo, when the application is packed into one or more Docker containers, this process is usually called containerization. Now, throughout this whole process, the application developers never had to install Nginx on their own system. Rather, they can just write code, change the HTML, build a new image, and run the container without worrying anything about the infrastructure. Even if there was any secret configuration, it would be present in the Docker file. I hope that the fundamentals of Docker are clearer to you now, but there are still some questions which are left unanswered. This was a very basic application that we made, but how do we make more complex applications like applications with databases and messaging systems? Do we need multiple Docker images and containers? And if yes, then how will they interact with each other? Is there any difference between how Docker works on a local computer versus how it works on a live server? Hang tight for my next video on Docker in which I will answer all of these questions so that you have a complete overview on how Docker works. See you in the next video. Bis done.